Are you in the market for an Aston Martin DB9? Then this video may be able to help you. I'm Kevin from Stream Cars. I specialize in sports and prestige cars, and I've found a niche with Aston Martins. Currently, we're in June 2024, and I have three Aston Martins in stock, all of different model years. And hopefully, if I show you the differences, that it might make your purchase a little bit easier. You wouldn't know from the number plate that this car is a 2005 example. This one is a 2008 but a 2009 model year and this Tornado red car on the end is a 2013, the last example before they went to DB11. The DB9 replaced the DB7 and was introduced with a 5.9 litre 450 horsepower engine. The anomaly is that it is badged a 6 litre but underneath that cover it is a 5.9. From 2008-2009 onwards, it then became a 6-litre engine with 470 horsepower, and by the time we get to 2013, this 6-litre V12 has grown to almost 520 horsepower, the fastest of all of them. Let's talk about the styling. This early car has a 7-bar grille, and then it goes to a five bar grill on the 2009 model onwards to the 2013 car. Interestingly, in 2011, Aston Martin introduced a car called the Virage. It didn't actually sell very well and was removed from the lineup. And the DB9 was introduced with actually more spec than the Virage and a price tag of £18,000 lower, so a much better value car. While we're talking about values, these DB9s represent excellent value. This 05 car I have on the market for £29,000. This 09 car is a Volante, so that means convertible, and that's £38,000 at the time of listing. And this 2013 car is currently £45,000. So there isn't a lot between them, but all of them are excellent value when you compare to other cars that are out there on the market. Again, in terms of styling on the front end, the headlights are shared between these two models, and it's not until you get to the newer car that they introduced a single headlamp and LED headlights. The bumpers remain the same, again, until you get to the 2013 car when it has a more stylistic front end and a more of a sort of a shark fin type of spoiler. And moving around to the back of the car, this Sandstorm blue car has the original red lights, whilst this car here has the clear rear lenses, which were much more popular, and several people have upgraded earlier cars to look like they're more modern. This car has actually been upgraded with a set of DBS alloys. The original 10-spoke items that this car would have come with We'll put a photograph in the video somewhere to show you the difference. But these are £5,000 from the DBS range and suit the car really well. The standard wheel on the 2009 model year has been upgraded on this particular car and it's fitted with the 19 inch 20 spoke graphite wheels. You may notice that both these vehicles are shod with Michelin tyres, which are an upgrade from the original ones that are now becoming less available and when we move to the 2013 car this car is fitted with the sports pack wheel which is another upgrade again and the car also has Bilstein dampers for right, better ride and handling. One of the biggest differences in terms of performance on the later car is the enhancement or the addition of carbon ceramic discs. You see these units here as big as dinner plates and the stopping power is phenomenal. Now looking at the rear end of the car, the blue and black examples haven't changed at all until we get to 2013. It has a much more stylistic rear diffuser and a flick up tail on the rear of the boot lid. The Valanti has a different petrol filler cap. This one you'll notice is square, 
compared to the other examples that have the filler cap in a circular fashion. Small design element. This early car lacks the rear light above the badge that the new, more modern cars have. When it comes to styling, the 2013 car has improved looks as well over the two earlier ones. The bonnet meshes have been lost in favour of this satin silver example and the door mirrors improve stylistically again. The difference between this side straight and the newer car which has the LED indicators. We'll move on to the interior. This sandstorm interior in this car is unusual. And it's paired with a walnut waterfall, which is far more classic. One of the biggest differences is the key. You've got a conventional key and an alarm fob, which is actually a leather covered Volvo unit. It has a conventional ignition, but the starter button up on the center of the dashboard here. This example really classical. But when we move to the newer cars, you'll see the difference and they're much more stylish. Although the DB9 is a four-seater, the two rear seats are rather pointless. Children over six years of age will probably not fit, at least for any length of time, and you're better off with just carrying maybe some soft bags. Access to those rear seats as well is not as easy in the older car as it is the newer ones. There's a clip at the base of the seat here, and the seat folds forward. Now if I show you on the newer cars what they designed, access to the rear of this one is now far easier with a button just on the headrest and folding forward like so. Again when comparing interiors, the seats have been upgraded, they're more stylish, and have a contrast stitching running throughout them. This particular example is obsidian black with silver coarse stitching. You'll notice in this one, a piano black waterfall. The instruments are the same, but they have different switch gear. And in the case of this car, it has a glass key that inserts in the center of the dash there. This is an example of the two keys that this car comes with, the plastic version, and the glass key, which is crystal, and they call it the ECU. When you insert this in the dashboard, it actually glows around the center, it's very smart. A lot of people break these because it's easy to drop them, and if you do, they chip ever so easily, and if you're going to Aston Martin for a placement, don't expect to pay anything less than a thousand pounds. I like to keep my crystal key in a pouch, to protect it. On this latest car are far more subtle but definitely more up to date. If you look at the electric seat buttons for example they're now finished in a chrome. Some of the other upgrades are not as obvious. This for example in the satellite navigation is now an upgraded Garmin navigation unit. The navigation system on these early cars wasn't that great so you can see the improvement that's been made with the upgrade to the Garmin navigation on the newer car. A lot of the upgrades aren't immediately obvious, but between the 2005 and 2009 car, the seat heating is improved as well as the lumbar support. Overall, the biggest enhancements and performance comes from the latest 2013 car. Aston Martin are one of the most prestigious brands in the world. And since the 60s, it's been a car to be seen in. With the association with James Bond, and now with Formula One, whichever Aston Martin you choose, you won't go wrong.